Let's go, Chair. We've got a lot to cover today. All righty. I'm Charlie Zelli. I am Chair. I'm at Council, and I'm also honored to chair this Corridor Management Committee. Welcome. This is the Metro Blue Line, in case you uh, think you're on the wrong train. Somebody said it's a sunny day in Minneapolis, and it certainly is, especially for all this exciting uh, options that are before us and uh, something we've been working on for a while. So I'll just cut to a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, you all know uh, how to uh, mute yourself if you're not speaking. We are recording this meeting uh, and it'll be available for viewing shortly. Um, given the, the governor's order, this is a virtual meeting, we all know. Uh, but if there, it, it is certainly open to the public. If there's any member of the public listening that would like to comment uh, or has a question, uh, please uh, share your thoughts with uh, Sophia Guinness at her email address, which is sophia.ginis at metrotransit.org. And you have any time through Friday the 19th, and we're going to post that, uh, all those comments or questions, uh, on the um, project website, which is bluelineext. Dot org. So just one word, blue line EXT, there's two E's next to each other, uh, dot org. And uh, so now maybe as we have get started, I'm going to ask members uh, and maybe uh, those that are uh, uh, alternates, just feel free to introduce yourself when I uh, call on the, uh, on the organization, our entity, and uh, maybe we should start with Met Council, council members. I know there's a few. Reva Chambliss, District 2, representing Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, Champlain, Osseo, um, Spring Lake Park, um, Fridley, Columbia Heights, and Hilltop. Yeah, good afternoon. This is Robert Lilligren, District 7. That's South Central Minneapolis, downtown to the river, North Loop, all of North Minneapolis, and Robbinsdale. It's good to be with you today. Anyone else from Met Council? No? All right. How about Hennepin County? Irene Fernando, Hennepin County Commissioner, District 2, and also our Regional Rail Authority Chair. Jeff Lundy, uh, County Commissioner for District 1. All right. Steve Arhat on behalf of Chair Green. Welcome. All right, Brooklyn Park. Uh, Tanya West Hafner, Mayor Pro Tem. All right, uh, Crystal. <laughs> Mayor Jim Adams. Mayor. Uh, Robbinsdale. Bill Blonigan, Robbinsdale Mayor. Golden Valley. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, city. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Chef. Uh, Jillian Rosenquist, Golden Valley City Council, and alternate for our Mayor, Chef Harris, who will now go. That's all right. Chef Harris, Golden Valley Mayor. Chef, Jillian, good to see you both. Uh, a, maybe... um, for Robbinsdale, there's an alternate that didn't get to introduce himself to. Go ahead. George, he's saying uh, he's muted apparently, but it's George Selman, uh, council member alternate for Robbinsdale. All right. Hello, George. Uh, uh, all right. Let's go to Minneapolis. Well, hello, Philippe. Philippe Cunningham, uh, Minneapolis City Council member. I represent the fourth ward, which is the upper north side, and I am not officially a member, but this does impact my ward. So you all have been generous enough to let me be a part of this. So thank you. Absolutely. Jeremiah Ellison here, uh, representing Ward 5 in Minneapolis. Uh, council member. Okay. 
Anyone else from Minneapolis? Uh, Brooklyn Center. Um, you know what? I joined about two minutes in because WebEx needed to load, but I'm Felicia with West Broadway Business and Area Coalition. So I don't know if this is where I should be saying that or not, but we are in Minneapolis. There's never a bad time, Felicia. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's see. I said Brooklyn Center. Sure. Yes, uh, this is Mayor Mike Elliott, uh, Brooklyn Center. Now, New Hope. Kathy Hampton, the mayor. Kathy, Maple Grove. Uh, Mike Opatz, staff from the city of Maple Grove. I am the alternate for Mayor Mark Stephenson, who sends his regrets. He's in court today. Good to okay. be here. Thank you. Good to see you, Mike. Uh, Osseo. All right, the Minneapolis uh, Park Board. Chris Meyer, Commissioner for District 1. Chris. Uh, the Blue Line Coalition. Hi, Nani Omar uh, with Blue Line Coalition. I'm an alternate today. All right. Uh, Denise Butler with ACER and the Blue Line Coalition. Ricardo Perez, uh, alternate Blue Line Coalition. Now the uh, Community Advisory Committee. Hi, this is Jason Greenberg. I'm a co-chair of the Community Advisory Committee. Great. And now the, I know uh, Felicia, we just, we're going to call on the Business Advisory Committee. <laughs> Maybe some other co-chairs here too. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Tim Baylor, and I'm representing the Robbinsdale Chamber of Commerce, and I am one of the tri-chairs of the Business Advisory Committee. My name is Mike Steinhauser, and I am the third chair of the Business Advisory Committee for the Robbinsdale area. Great. And now the Airports Commission, the MAC. Anybody from the Airports Hello. Commission? Yes. There you Hello. are. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Uh, Bridget Rafe, Vice President for Planning and Development with the Airports Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Uh, MnDOT. I'm Mike Barnes, MnDOT's Metro District Engineer. And Goldberg, I'm the alternate for Mike. Great. And now Metro Transit. Well, Wes Koistra may join us later. Uh, did I miss anybody that would like to introduce themselves? This is George Selman checking his microphone now. It's loud and clear, George. Thank you for the intro, Bill. I messed with the settings uh, to get rid of background noise, and I did a really good job. <laughs> well, don't do what I did. I try to close the chat function, and I log myself out of a meeting. So, uh, you know, we're, we're still learning after a year. Um, okay, so let's get into, we have a lot to cover. Uh, well, let's just start by uh, approval of the minutes from February 11th. Those should have been sent out, or I think they were sent out on Friday, March 5th for review. So is there any um, corrections or uh, uh, edits? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, this is Bill Blonigan moving approval of the minutes. Thank you. For that motion. Is there a second? This is uh, Mike Elliott. I'll second. Thank you. All right, Don, uh, if you wouldn't mind calling the roll, this is the one thing we need to vote on. Okay. Um, Council Member Lilligren. Aye. Council Member Chambliss. Aye. Commissioner Lundy. Aye. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Fernando. Aye. Mayor Harris. Aye. Mayor Blanagan. Aye. Mayor Adams. Aye. 
Mayor Pro Tem West Hafner. Aye. Mayor Elliott. Aye. Commissioner Chris Meyer. Aye. Denise Butler. Aye. Ricardo Perez. Aye. Bridget Reef. Aye. Mike Barnes. Aye. Jason Greenberg. Aye. Felicia Perry. Aye. And Chair Zelli. Aye. The minutes are adopted. Um, so uh, the next on the agenda is just to hear some uh, committee reports, but it's my really great uh, honor to welcome, which we did briefly during the introductions, but now more formally, uh, we have a, uh, some co the co-chairs of both the Community Advisory Committee and the Business Advisory Committee. And uh, so you are now officially part of the uh, the uh, uh this uh committee and uh we have uh for the community advisory committee co-chairs jason greenberg and uh, felipe souza and from the business advisory committee we have co-chairs uh felicia perry and mike stein hauser and tim baylor and and maybe we could just i know you've introduced yourself just your names but uh, maybe you could just to tell us a little bit about yourselves uh, so we get to know you. And if you just take a few minutes, um, uh, why don't we uh, start with the Community Advisory Committee uh, uh, um, and then uh, hear from uh, just, just a chance for introductions. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Jason Greenberg. Um, Philippe can't make it today, so I'm going to represent the <laughs> both co-chairs of the uh, Community Advisory Committee. And for me, I'm a Robbinsdale resident. Uh, I've lived here since 2007. Been, uh, I've been very interested in uh, helping our community and being involved. Was on the Planning Commission in Robbinsdale for eight years. Uh, I was on the Community Advisory Committee previously, old alignment. So excited to take on a, a larger role here. And in uh, my personal life, I'm married. I have two, um, two daughters. Uh, I'm an account executive for a technology company here in the Twin Cities. Welcome. Thanks. Well, let's jump to Felicia. Uh, hello, my name is Felicia Perry. I'm the executive director of the West Broadway Business and Area Coalition. Um, for those unfamiliar, we're a business association located in North Minneapolis. We serve North Minneapolis businesses with a concentration on the West Broadway business district. Um, myself, personally, I'm a longtime Northside resident, entrepreneur, um, and more. <laughs> I've uh, worked at WBC for a few years now um, and just did work across the, the state really. And um, I did quite a bit of work with economic development, specifically in the creative entrepreneurship space, um, as well as a background in uh, banking, finance, accounting, and marketing. So I don't know what else you all want to know. I have a bio. No, that, that's, that's great. Uh, Mike? Um, Mike Steinhauser. Born, bred, brought up Robbinsdale, New Hope, Crystal, Robbinsdale area, um, Merwin Drug, uh, Merwin Long Term Care Pharmacy. I manage Robert Shopping Center. Um, I have multiple businesses and uh, um, real estates in that area, live in the area, and I'm also current chairman of the board of North Memorial Healthcare Center. Great. Thanks. Welcome, Mike. And Tim. Good afternoon, everyone. I um, I came to town years ago with the Minnesota Vikings and fell in love with the place, so we're, we're still here. Currently live in Minneapolis, uh, business owner in Minneapolis and throughout the Twin Cities with McDonald's restaurants. We have restaurants in Minneapolis and also in Robbinsdale. Uh, I was asked to represent the Robbinsdale Chamber of Commerce uh, for this task, 
Um, I'm also a real estate developer and I've developed projects throughout the metropolitan area. Currently working on a, a, a village in Minneapolis on Broadway Avenue. Former planning commission member at the city of Minneapolis. Uh, former lieutenant governor candidate uh, for the state of Minnesota. Um, over the years have worked on just about every civic and philanthropic board and activity in town. Currently a member of the Minneapolis Foundation Board of Trustees, the North Memorial Hospital Systems Board of Trustees, Meet Minneapolis Board of Directors, and I was recently appointed by uh, Governor Waltz to the Metropolitan Airports Commission. Thank you. Sam, you're a busy guy, as all of you are. Well, thank you. Thank each of you for spending the time with us and and really starting on this on this uh, on this journey because uh, your input your committee's inputs um, are really going to be uh, critical for uh, for for a successful project. Um, so let's uh, hear a report. I understand uh, uh, the CAC uh, Jason, you're going to give us a report, and then uh, followed by our BAC uh, Felicia, you're going to give us a report. So go ahead, uh, Jason. Yep. So we had our first meeting, um, nominated co-chairs, of which I'm one, so that's exciting. And um, really, I mean, used it as an opportunity to do introductions and for the CAC members to meet uh, project staff, um, kind of discuss some of the, the new goals for the year and the new alignment and uh, kind of where we're headed. But um, you know, not a lot of uh, deep discussion, a uh, few questions around, you know, making sure, you know, people asking questions around confidence and, um, you know, making sure that this is going to get complete because it's been drawn out for so long. But I think overall, um, you know, a lot of attendees, which was great. So a lot of interaction and, uh, and a chance for everyone to, to get to know one another. Thank you. Yep. Alicia? Yes. Um, so uh, the Business Advisory Committee, very similarly, uh, we did our introductions and a bit of an overview. We also, uh, during our meeting, appointed three co-chairs or tri-chairs. I think we're still trying to decide on what we're calling, uh, we're calling us, but it's uh, three of us, myself, uh, Mr. Baylor, uh, and, <clears throat> and Mike, that are the co-chairing this uh, particular committee. We also discussed uh, kind of like a project overview. Um, some of us have a, a bit more background and insight on the project, so it was good to have that discussion with folks. Um, we also talked a bit about um, the different components um, that we uh, that were part of this: the design, the community work, um, environmental review. Um, and uh, I think we have our next meeting set for coming up on the 22nd. Uh, I can't see head nods right now, um, but we did discuss our upcoming meeting and also thinking about further furthering our public engagement uh, in a community centric approach. So we had a bit of discussion, um, higher level stuff, not not as deep either. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I, did I miss anything, co-chairs? No, nope, that sounded just right. Okay, thanks, Felicia. Thank you, uh, Jason and Felicia. Uh, does anybody in the committee, any other committee members, have any questions for uh, from those committees? Um, well, thanks. Uh, th I know this is kind of the beginning or a new start, not a beginning, uh, to uh, this uh, process of route identification and engagement along the way. And uh, so we really do take seriously your uh, committee perspective. And, um, and, and I think as we, uh, as we start meeting uh, more uh, as we go on, your, your point of view will be really, really helpful. Um, so let's move on to the uh, Initial route identification. I underline the word initial. These are options. It's pretty exciting that we're at this point. Um, I have to say, you know, we put a, a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, stake in this calendar of May 11th, March 11th. And when you think of how we've come from August, uh, leaving the uh, old alignment and really pushing forward, we've done a lot. And I, 
really appreciate the worker staff and then everybody on in this uh, in this room uh, to kind of embrace this new chapter. I mean, this is this is a this represents a big change and uh, the thoughtfulness and the uh, and the process itself uh, is so critical. And we talked a lot about not what we end up doing, but how we how we do how we go about this this uh, this uh, this tireless uh, work will be uh, really um, uh, uh, an indicator of, how, of our ultimate success. So knowing that this is just the beginning of the conversation, um, we want to uh, ensure that um, we get uh, all uh, as much open as possible about both the opportunities, the fears and the um, and the uh, and the expectations going forward. So, we're lucky we have Dan Soler, Nick Landwehr, and Sophia Guinness to uh, take us through uh, where we are and what it looks like. So um, who's starting that? Dan? Thank you. Thank you, Chair and members. And before I start, I just want to say that uh, after the first PAC meeting and the first BAC meeting, when we as staff got a chance to meet the members and meet the leadership and see the new chairs, co-chairs and side chairs of the group. I can simply say as a staff, we just went, wow, um, these are great groups. We've got a lot of really, a lot of really good people and a lot of real big energy on them. So we are excited about that as one of the steps as we move forward to continue on this very important Blue Line project. So. I'm just going to simply start with just a couple of points. For those of you, um, I should introduce myself. For anybody that doesn't know, I'm Dan Solar, and um, I am the uh, um, kind of the transit liaison person and transit lead at Hennepin County, and one of the project leads for the Blue Line Extension Project. As many of you know, I've spent the last six plus years working on the Blue Line Extension, either for Men. Hennepin County. Um, so I have been through all of the ups, downs, good and bad. Um, and um, we we moved and worked very diligently to move this project forward on an alignment um, that was chosen um, by our communities back in the 2014 timeframe. And um, we have been unable to make that happen. So in last summer time frame, we brought the project management team and staff back together to talk about a new way to move this forward. And the CMC and the project partners made a very difficult decision. And that was the decision to find and commit to a way to find an LRT route um, that serves these communities, that essentially serves the Botanil Corridor, if you will, from Target Field Station to Northern Brooklyn Park, um, that does not use Burlington Northern Railroad. Um, talked often, and I've visited with many people about the inability to move forward with BN. Um, while we tried and worked on many strategies um, and different opportunities and methodologies to make that happen, we have been unable, and BNSF is simply unwilling to work on cooperative agreement to allow co-location in that quarter. So while that is true, the need to build a project, the need to serve the communities in this section of Hennepin County, and the need to provide a transit solution that works for this area still lives. And so we brought the CMC back together about um, discussing to move this project forward without using freight rail. And how will we go about identifying a community supported alignment that would make that happen? So we started with the development of what we called project alignment and project engagement principles. Um, and so we worked on that um, through the October November and December timeframe with the ability to at the December CMC as um, and that was kind of the final meeting of the previous CMC 
then with January, February timeframe being the first meeting of the, this, this CMC as we know it, to adopt those project principles. And many of you are familiar with those. We've, so, we've, we've done those uh, and reviewed those often at this committee. Jason, you can go to the next slide. We talk about some of those key steps, which was meeting new starts criteria um, as a federal transit administration project in the Twin Cities, maintaining the existing alignment as much as possible, mitigating negative impacts, complementing existing transit ways, finding a way that we could be as close to the previous goals and objectives of what this project intended to do, which is to basically build a transportation project connecting the Northwest suburbs of Hennepin County. Um, so we got back into the swing while we've had, why we had this kind of, kind of dead period for a while as we were getting through um, the BNSF negotiations, we now have in place this CMC that we're meeting with today. We have in place a new business advisory and community advisory committee. We've got our project management team up and running, co-led by Sam O'Connell from Met Council and myself with our staff teams. Um, we've got all of those pieces put together, um, ready to tackle this issue for this year. We also know and believe and are fully committed to what we consider to be a robust, fully engaged community engagement process on this. So we did some initial community engagement um, with some assistance from the Blue Line Coalition and Juxtaposition and the Harrison neighborhood to focus on where do we want to connect, what are concerns. We did some, we did some, uh, we did some town halls. We did some listening sessions. We did some one-on-one -on -one interviews. Our consultants and ourselves did to kind of make sure that we were heading down the right direction to put us where we are today. And so you can go to the next slide, Jason. This is a slide many of you have seen. We are now ready today. Um, hey, to hey, does this, this, this sound this familiar to you? Hold on. Did I miss something? Did I? Sorry, sorry. The, the, to present to this quarter management committee, the project management team's recommended route options for consideration in the entire alignment. And so you'll see, similar to what we presented before, that there's a difference between what we're presenting in area one up on the north, what we've identified in area two here in the middle, and routes that we've identified down in area three. So Nick's going to take those forward. He's going to present our recommended um, routes for consideration, and then also talk about next steps, how we engage on this, how we do some evaluation and move this process forward. So thanks everybody. This has been, as I agree, Chair, this has been a big effort in the making, both by staff and many of you who we've worked with. So we're really excited to move to this next. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Nick Landwer. I guess that's my lead in. So um, my name is Nick Landwer. I'm uh, the Metro Transit Engineering and, and Design Lead for the project. I've been with the project for the last six years. And uh, I'm honored here to be able to uh, actually do the map rollout. So uh, th these are going to be the project team recommended routes uh, that are based on our project principles, uh, our coordination with the project partners, and the input that we've received so far. And uh, with this, we're looking for a robust discussion here in the in the coming months with with the community and with with our with our project partners to uh, discuss and and get comments and have questions and and get suggestions back on, on these. So this this is really a time for communication and an open conversation. So I'm going to walk through these uh, based on the on the three areas from the slide that that we just saw and and have the discussion that way. So. In area number one, um, we, we this this is uh, up in Brooklyn Park and uh, really not affected by the freight rail corridor. So the belief from the project team and 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 input from our partners is that these routes do not need to be modified at the time. We have 90% design. We've done a lot of hard work. Uh, we think we're in a really good place with the with these and and want to move forward. And, and 
we believe that these are consistent with the project principles and they retain the previous alignment uh, in this in this location and it continues the uh, existing project and project definition being a, a light rail from uh, Target Field Station in Minneapolis to uh, the Oak Grove Park Station or Oak Grove Station uh, up in Brooklyn Park. And uh, another key thing is as we had formed the, the, this alignment and, and done the work in the past, it, this this alignment or this section of the en route serves major destinations in Brooklyn Park. Uh, for example, North Hennepin Community College uh, and multiple commercial areas in, and uh, the target campus on the north end. Uh, Jason, next slide, please. So uh, this is this is the beginning of the, of the route roll, rollout, the route maps. Um, this is area one. And on the map in the blue is the, uh, the, the, the alignment that we're pursuing. This is the 2013 locally preferred or LPA alignment. And the blue dots with the little blue with the little gold dots in the middle are, are the, the station locations that we had been we're, we're, we're proposing to continue forward with. What's not shown on this map at the very north end or top end of this map is also a, an operations and maintenance facility building that that is designed in this plan and, and a key function for this route. So the four stations that that we are showing on the plan are Oak Grove Parkway Station. We've done a lot of work to make sure that that fits within. Uh, future development uh, visions for the city and and works with with how the infrastructure and and uh, and roadways would go in in that area in that north of 610 area. Uh, 93rd Avenue station um, is is the next station down. Uh, that's a and more of an industrial manufacturing area, but that this area is really growing and and developing with with the city and their plans. Uh, the 85th Avenue station uh, is, a, is a station that, that is directly connected or directly next door to uh, the North Hennepin Community College campus. And they've been a good partner with us uh, to this date. We've worked with them on, on how their campus is going to flow and function uh, through the campus. And, and we're also a kitty corner or uh, across diagonally across the street from the, the Hennepin County Library that was just built within the last few years. Um, Brooklyn Boulevard Station is the next one. This is a very uh, heavy commercial shopping area um, and it connects to uh, the Starlight Transit Center for, for Metro Transit, so another key connection in this area. Uh, so again, uh, maintaining the existing uh, plans in this area and, and, and moving forward with that. And this is now the, the transition to area number two. So uh, Jason, next slide, please. Thank you. So. Area two, uh, the considerations we have in area number two, uh, we wanted to make sure that we're consistent, again, with our project principles, that we're trying to maintain or you know honor that existing alignment as much as possible. So as we're going through that, we want to stay as close to we were, still serve the cities of Crystal and, and Robbinsdale in this area. And um, we feel that there's multiple stations and elements that can be preserved with, with, with a, a route adjustment in this area. Um, one of the, 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 the things is we're looking at a potential route or routes through this area would are, uh, there's, there's a lot of geographical features that, that we had to work around to, to get a continuous route through there. So Crystal Lake, for example, Twin Lakes, the, the Crystal Airport are, are all uh, geographical barriers that, that, that we, we had to consider as we're going through here. Um, again, we wanna make sure we're still serving those major destinations in this area, uh, including the, the Crystal Business District, at downtown Robbinsdale, but then it's also brought us the opportunity to uh, serve North Memorial Campus. Uh, in, in the last six years, I've been at so many public meetings where, where people have said, you know, uh, can't you get this alignment to, to go to North Memorial? Um, how, how can you get to more, more North Memorial? Can you get a bridge to North Memorial? Can you get a tunnel to North Memorial? And with, with the old alignment, it, re it really wasn't feasible. Uh, but this is a good opportunity that that this can become a, a destination along our route. So, uh, Jason, next slide, please. So this is area two, route two, and uh, um, from from this route uh, in the gold hatched area was the the previous alignment uh, the, in the BNSF right away, and uh, shadowed in there are three uh, kind of bullseyes in the area, which indicate to uh, the, the former station locations. And uh, what, what's prominent here is the black 
route or corridor. And, and as, as we've talked with the project partners and had discussions, um, the, 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 we, we asked, are, are there other potential routes that we should be pursuing? But, but really the Botanal Boulevard, County Road 81 in this location is, is the, the route that, that makes sense, that's continuous, that, that will fit in uh, a light rail and meet our project principles. So um, as you start, as we start at the north end, we, we meet up with the Brooklyn Boulevard station and our Brooklyn Boulevard section area one. And we, we had a structure that, that used to come over to the, to the freight rail corridor. We, we imagine there's still gonna be a structure that, that brings us up and meets us with, with Botnum Boulevard. Um, our, our routes and alignments, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to do a center running at grade uh, light rail wherever possible. That, that's the most efficient and, and we feel best serves the public, but uh, th that's what we're looking at. So in, in car road 81, Botnum Boulevard, we're looking at center running at grade uh, alignment through here. So as we go from the north down, uh, you see the black lines and, and that and the old, old or previous alignment uh, are, are right next to each other. It's the, the, the road right away uh, abuts uh, the railroad right away in this location. So this gives us an opportunity to, to maintain the service through the area and keep those commitments in this area. Um, and it gives us also the opportunity to, to maintain that uh, a station, you know, to keep pursuing that station at 63rd Avenue because there is an existing park and ride in this area. And we've done a lot of work to, to, to work on this as a destination and a station uh, to, to come to. Um, as we travel a little bit farther south, uh, the next circle in Crystal area is at Bass Lake Road. And this is in the middle of the map. We're, we're still very close to the to the old alignment and and we feel that Bass Lake Road is, is really another key station that that an area that we want to focus on because this does give us the access to Crystal Business District and and Grazer Park that the city has just uh, uh, put some uh, a major investment into. As we start going farther south here you'll, you'll see the black alignment the, the Botno alignment the suggested route um, starts to diverge away from, from the freight rail corridor as, as we go south into the Robbinsdale area. And, um, you know, one of these questions is as we go through Robbinsdale and along the whole alignment is, you know, how are we gonna make this fit, you know, and, and we're gonna have to work on where station placements will be. And, and as we get farther away from the station uh, that we had located at 42nd and Hubbard in this location, we're gonna have to look at how, how we replace that station and how we get, uh, uh, elements that fit within within Robbinsdale. So the alignments that we show are, 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 are very rough planning level um, alignments. Uh, we have a lot of engineering work to do to, to, to and work with our project partners to ensure that, that these alignments will work and they fit within the context of, of the communities that we're going through. So, um, and the south end of this alignment, uh, as, as we get down into the, to the lower uh, right-hand corner, uh, that's, it's not shown on the map, but that's where North Memorial is, where, where Lowry Avenue and West Broadway uh, uh, converge in this area. So Jason, next slide, please. So this brings us down into area three and, and the considerations we have for area three, again, we wanna be consistent with our project principles. I mean, this is really, it was a lot of work up front in this project, but that's, this is what's guiding us through to, to help us uh, bring forward uh, route options and, and, and listen and, and move forward with the project. So um, we want to make sure that as we get down to area three, this is down more in the Minneapolis area. And we want to make sure as in all areas that we're minimizing residential, commercial and, and environmental impacts. We want to, we want to come in with a, a light, as light of a footprint as we have, you know, make sure that we're working within the community and not just uh, uh, um, tearing it up. Um, we want to make sure that we're complementing the existing and planned uh, metro transit ways in this area. There's a lot of work that's happened and, and, and is, is, will be happening in this area. And uh, when, when appropriate, we want to make sure that we're going to open to, to, to working with the community to pursue opportunities that serve even more people. We, we see this as, as maybe an opportunity with this uh, looking at new routes that can we connect with more ridership? Can we get to more people that, that, uh, uh, have challenges in mobility and, 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 and are relying on transit. So this is a great opportunity. Uh, next side, slide please, uh, Jason. So 
th this area is a little bit more challenging uh, it, because it, it is a larger area and there are more opportunities. So um, I'm, the next couple of slides I'm going to show are some a basis on or, or part of the basis on, on how we, we came forward with recommended uh, alignment options here. And this map is 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 kind of a heat map or that that shows um, available right away in 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 the, the area the blue area of of of, of area three, um, and you know the first thing that we need to do is 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 look for for light rail. How are we? How do we get a connected through route through this area of blue that that is that wide enough has a large enough right away to accommodate light rail. And, and still continue the existing functions it has. So um, we do know that that uh, you know about a minimum right of way to keep to maintain uh, traffic on on a roadway and have a guideway in there and, and still have uh, pedestrian ways. We need about seventy five to eighty feet through there. So um, this is where this map comes in handy. The the green uh, really shows us green means go. Green means that we have plenty of right of way in this area to work with to to work with uh, uh, working existing traffic, uh, existing modes of transportation like uh, pedestrians and bikes and, and get a guideway in there. As we start shifting through the spectrum and down the lighter green, uh, even into, into the yellow, uh, we, we can fit a light rail into this area. It's when we start getting orange and red is where the right of way becomes so narrow that the, the impacts from a light rail become pretty large. So this is really, uh, one of the areas that we started focus on, what's available right away. Next slide, please, Jason. Another consideration is, you know, what, what is the zoning and, and density of, 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 of commercial and, and business and residential in the area? The, 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 the higher density in, in those aspects for light rails, the better, because that's where we're going to be serving our clients and riders and, and serving the, the community and businesses. So. This is what we looked at as, as some of the best places to, to look at uh, for LRT. So you can start seeing the density uh, from this graphic. This is from Minneapolis zoning that, that shows density of, 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 of more businesses and, and, and residential and, and proposed developments through there. So next slide, please, Jason. So this is map of area three and, and this map of area three really uh, brings us down to um, two routes that, that we're proposing. Uh, th these are the, the apparent routes that, that have the right of way we need and, and uh, uh, seem to meet the destinations uh, that, that are, are out there and, and, and meet the, 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 uh, the ridership um, for the area. So the, the routes are the West Broadway route in green on, on, the, on the kind of diagonally slicing through the map, and then the Lowry map, uh, Lowry route. Uh, going on Lowry Avenue on the north end of the map. Um, bigger challenge, uh, th these, these will be challenging to, to move forward with and, and, and determine what is the most appropriate route, but this is why we want to go out to the community and, and get input and have that discussion. But uh, uh, once we even narrow down these routes, they, they, they still will be challenging to build like any light rail is. It, the light rail is, is, is a big impact, and, but, it, but it has a lot of rewards that come along with it. Um, as you look in the uh, rectangle in, the, in kind of the, the, the south, uh, lower south section, uh, lower right uh, section of this map, you'll see what's links. And this is the, 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 the challenge is how do we get to either of these two routes of West Broadway and, um, or Lowry Avenue. And, and the routes are, are a, a, a example of, of a few that, that really stand out as you start looking at the maps of of being appropriate routes that that have the the least amount of impacts meet meet our project principles and and have the the right of way available. I do have the the next map if we can go to the next slide that that maybe highlights how these these links fit within uh, the community and and how it comes out of Minneapolis a little bit better. That this aerial shows a little bit more context of with. On the, on the lower right hand side of the screen is where Target Field Station is and, and we're coming out of there with the pink and blue links and, and we have the, the assortment of colors that, that go up to either West Broadway or Lowry Avenue. So that the blue link that you see in this location would, would really capitalize on some of the existing work we've already done. It follows the, uh, 
the previous alignment where we came off of Target Field Station and, uh, and come down at grade through the intersection at 6th and 7th. Um, and before where we continued down Olson Memorial Highway, this, this link shows us uh, uh, turning up 7th Street and, 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 and moving north, northwest. And it takes us up with all of these route options. A challenge is going to be to cross 94 uh, on them. So we'll, we get across 94, and the, and the blue route shows us continuing along the west side of the 94 route right away up to West Broadway in this case. Or it could stop a little bit shorter, follow the green link uh, that, that would go up Lindale Avenue uh, to Broadway Avenue in, in this location. Another option is we go over to um, the, the pink route coming off the of Target Field Station again is this is a little bit more outside the box, has a lot of challenges to it, but it would come off of Target Field Station at uh, on a structure, uh, weave its way through the Metro Transit Haywood campus uh, over over kind of the bus driveway coming out of the garage, uh, still on structure over uh, Fifth Avenue um, over to the third and fourth street ramps. And, and there's some right away along those ramps where we would continue through that right away. Again, uh, going over I-94 and in this case, connecting to uh, Lindale Avenue or another option would be to come down to grade, uh, connect to 10th Avenue at grade and, and, and turn on 10th Avenue to Washington Avenue and from Washington Avenue, uh, go north uh, to either West Broadway or up to Lowry Avenue. So these are just uh, the beginning of options that are out there um, or combinations uh, of these could be an option of, of how we work through and, and make this connection. Um, again, this is where we're looking for input and, and, and for comments on this. Next slide, Jason. So uh, some of the comments that we, we, we've had recently are, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of suggestions and and, and people are gonna start wondering why we did not recommend certain options that, that may seem apparent at first blush, but uh, just wanted to cover them real quick, but we, we still are open to the, the, these discussions. Uh, so some of the route options we haven't or are, are not recommending would be Penn, Emerson and, Penn, Emerson and Fremont. Uh, we aren't recommending those because Penn Avenue has the existing C line that runs down that and, and that function it's functioning very well as well as Emerson and Fremont are, are ready to, to start construction very soon for the D-Line uh, BRT. Uh, another consideration where both of these roadways have very narrow right of way and bringing light rail down them would have significant impacts to, to the residential uh, uh, flavor of these neighborhoods. Next slide, please. Uh, another option that's brought up uh, and, and we haven't recommended as, as, as the project team is Lindale Avenue from West Broadway North to Lowry Avenue. Um, our, one of the, the biggest reason is it, it's, it, they don't really meet our project principles because they have a very narrow right of way in, in this area. It's 66 foot right of way. So that a, a lot less than what we need to maintain the traffic and, and keep a, a guideway, a LRT guideway through this area. But we also see with with uh, uh, street facing residents in this area that that there would be some significant impacts to the residents in here, um, and and the flavor of that that community. Uh, next slide, please, Jason. A another option that that's within the blue chart area was th that was uh, brought up or has been brought up was to continue down Olson Memorial Highway to Highway 100 and north, and then connect. Um, up north in, in Robbinsdale Crystal area. And, and one of the reasons that we're not recommending this also, it really does not meet our project principles because we, we, we feel that it, it starts skirting around from where the ridership is and, and it's avoiding riders in many of the locations. It, it's a much longer route and gets really, a, it diverts from our previous alignment where we're really trying to stay uh, close and true to that previous alignment. and. As we've discussed this uh, with project partners, um, th there really is little uh, support for, th for this corridor or opportunity. So with that, um, next slide, Jason. Uh, Chair, I, I, we're, we're open to committee discussion and comments and questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Nick and, and Dan. 
uh, that is a lot of material, and I know we're kind of absorbing it. But uh, let's just take a pause and see if anybody has any comments, any thoughts, questions uh, at this point. Nick, uh, this is Mike Steinelzer. A um, couple quick questions. You mentioned that you were looking at center running at grade in area number two. And then the um, question I have is, have you done traffic pattern, traffic counts, and any kind of environmental assessment yet in that area? Uh, uh, um, Mr. Steinhauser, we're, we're still really early on that. Uh, you, we are, are, are starting to roll through what what impact center running would have at the, in this area. And we are open for for other options as if center running does not work, you know, if, if we need to look at structure or, or move the alignment around, that this is the point where we do that. But we're really early in that. We're just starting to pull in our, our traffic data and information to, to look at what those impacts are. We're starting to look at what impacts would be to the intersections along that whole corridor. And, you know, we're, we're starting to, to run uh, uh, lines down the alignment to a typical section to see what would those impacts be and, and what do we need to address and, and where does it fit? So we're, we're really early in the game. Not a lot of, of engineering has gone into these routes. These are really planning level routes, lines on a paper. Thank you, Nick. I'll just hold my questions in until that comes out. Appreciate it. Any other thoughts from anybody? Uh, hi, this is Ricardo with Blue Line Coalition. Uh, we prepared a small statement for the meeting, but I want to make sure that maybe the questions go first. Sure, yes. Uh, thanks, Ricardo. Okay. This is this is Denise with Blue Line Coalition. First, want to say that we have not seen any of this, have not been discussed or share with us, nor our communities, our community partners. Um, so we got this information. We were introduced to these options um, 8.30 this morning by Sophia Guinness and team. And hopefully she, you know, she took some notes um, to bring back the full scope of um, the pushback that we, we see with these options. Um, as we talk about the principles, Looking at Lowry, we, we realize that Lowry does not begin to meet the principles that we set forth here at the CMC table. So really questioning what is the hidden agenda by even it being an option here today um, in this meeting. And then also, Denise, you were muted. Denise, you might be on mute. I don't know what happened. It just got really funky here. So, and then also wondering why if we're just moving, making the adjustments um, in area two of the line, why the original alignment is not being shown here today um, as a potential option at all, or even just to give some people who are new to the conversation um, a little bit more context of what was the, the discrepancies ahead that brought us to this um, moment right now. Because some of the things and the pushback that I'm hearing about the original alignment have nothing to do with what was shared with the community as far as BNSF was an issue. We want to get off their tracks. And if we found a solution to get off their tracks, why are we detouring so far away from the original alignment? So those are just some of the comments that I'm going to share today, um, but would ask that no kind of voting or you know definitive decisions be made as far as when we put you these two, these options that have been shared with us today, but really ask that we go back to the community, be more transparent and communicate more clearly to the community providing all the necessary content and really getting the community's input on what are some really option, real options that we set. 
I, I, I think I can I can start with that and, and Dan or, or, or chair, please, Sam, j jump in as necessary. But uh, this really is the, the, the rollout uh, that, you know, we took an initial stab because we the public has said, hey, we need something to look at. We need something to point at. So we we rolled these out based on uh, we, we feel based on the on the project principles and, 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 and based on where we think the alignments will would fit and be appropriate. Uh, but th these aren't the the be all and end all. This is really a lot of discussion, and this is where we really wanted to start that community discussion to get feedback, to get suggestions, and and you know, do what did we get right here is one of the questions. But what what are, what do we miss? You know, what what do, else do we need to discuss? So I, I think that answers question one. Yeah, um, Nick, thanks, thanks, yeah. Chair. I mean, what Nick is saying. I mean, Denise, you, your comments are. Are, are well noted. This is not meant to be something that we're bringing. There is no recommendation here today. There is no vote here today. There is no, this is what we think is the only thing that works here today. This is the initial rollout of ideas for routes that connect Target Field Station and Oak Grove Parkway Station that do not use BNSF right away. And they are not just something we just threw on a map. They are also based on the review of the project principles. They're based on official public engagement that we've had um, with the community. And they're meant to be just what they're doing now, is to begin the discussion, begin the community discussion. And Sam's got a lot of slides. Sam's got a lot of slides coming up here and, talk about, and Sophia about how we do that. This is just that. It's to begin, Denise, as Denise identified, the discussions that need to take place about are these the places um, that we should be looking at? Are we identifying spots? So I think we are at that time of where, of, of how we needed to do it. We didn't want to bring a blank map that said, where do you think it should go? At the same time, we are certainly not bringing, hey, here's the only place that LRT can go. Um, up or down, you should vote on it. We're not there at all. And uh, I guess I uh, uh, thank you, Dan, and thank you, Nick. And this is, I guess, a very this is very preliminary, and it is being revealed today for everybody to kind of react to, both in all directions. Um, Ricardo, do you would, would you feel comfortable reading your statement now, or would you like to wait till later? It'd, it'd be perfectly fine. Thank you. Um, I mean, I think that Denise really centered our concerns. She, uh, you know, she's a member of the Land Coalition and, and also of ACER. Uh, but I mean, basically, I want to like make sure that we center the fact that as a coalition, uh, we don't have time to really react, you know, quote unquote, to this information because it's not one person, but it's a set of partners that are talking to communities who are completely disconnected of this situation because many of them could be tuning in to the current trial of the police that is happening at the moment and they're not paying attention to this. So for us to have the time to be able to bring this information to our communities is very important. And at the same time, the other thing we wanna make sure to express is that the funding opportunities available for us to do this kind of works uh, is are very limited and the process for us to apply for these fundings is very complicated and I think like based on the results of the hiring um, you can see a gap in certain communities that could not be a part of the conversation uh, and then the other thing that is very important to us is the fact that we don't feel that there's a proactive conversation around policies to address displacement and economic development. And we've been pushing for a set of policies and tools for since 2013 uh, that we feel it's very important that we're not waiting until the train is built for us to implement these solutions. Uh, as a matter of fact, we believe that anti-displacement should be a priority and in the forefront of all of the decision makings uh, in this process of building this train. So lastly, uh, you know, we're very disappointed that 
last year in August, we found out about the drop of negotiations via a phone call like less than 24 hours that when it was happening. And after a year, we haven't really seen any changes uh, in, in how we're getting information from you. So we see the opportunities of this investment, of this project. We see how this can make a difference in our communities, but we need your help to be at the table and not on the menu. And we need some changes to make sure that this is actually happening because the statements don't really seem to be working. We just need some action from you all. And I know you're very busy and there's many things going on, but we're looking at you like you're our only source of information here. So thank you for the time. Uh, thank you, Ricardo, for sharing that. And uh, we are listening intently. I think uh, the idea that uh, you just uh, eliminated that, uh, uh, that there's so many perspectives that we want to make sure we're fully considering and, uh, and uh, not uh, pre, pre judging anything. And also, uh, this is a great conversation because, uh, you know, this alignment may not be on the top of everybody's mind. Uh, this month or next. It's not just a Chauvin trial. It's the pandemic. I mean, we're, we're challenged in many different ways. So uh, I would have to say we're, we really need to think about how staff and all of us uh, need to be kind of thinking, what are we missing? And uh, your perspective is, um, you know, helpful to bring that in front of us. Um, anybody else have a comment at this point? Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chair, it's uh, Shep Harris from Golden Valley. Hey, Shep. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you to Ricardo and thank you to Denise for their for their uh, for their voice and for the voices that they represent. Um, I can't underscore the importance of having them here in this room virtually with us. Um, I happen to be working on a project with Reconnect Rondo, uh, which is to literally uh, restore. The, the damage historical and trauma that was done by our state many decades ago. Uh, so to Ricardo's point, Denise's point about communication and making sure that we aren't creating uh, future disparities, I think is really important. So I just wanna say thank you to them for, for being here and for continuing to speak to that. Uh, from a Golden Valley perspective, um, obviously you can see we're, uh, we're a little bit cut out of this. Um, are we pleased with it? No. Uh, do we understand? Yes, uh, we understand the situation. Um, it, it unfortunately uh, underscores the uh, the informal what, what's called the golden rule. Uh, he or she who owns the gold makes the rules, and in this case, it's Burlington Northern. Um, they uh, do not want to play well in the sandbox, and and I'm not even sure if they came to the sandbox in the first place. Uh, maybe they did a little bit uh, with the Southwest Line but clearly they did not want to cooperate on this. So it is extremely disappointing, especially after really uh, 10 plus years of uh, time, effort, uh, and, and money, taxpayer dollars spent out in Golden Valley trying to get so much input. And that's not just on the part of the city, it's on the part of the Met Council, it's on the part of the county. Um, and so I, I think Denise mentioned, um, uh, I'm not looking to, to correct anyone, but. Uh, the original line being what we've just left um, 10 years ago or, or even beyond my, when I came into this conversation, the uh, the original line was, I wouldn't say exactly like this, but it was kind of uh, along the same vein. And uh, but the community support and other logistics uh, got in the way. And uh, and so that's why it shifted over to the proposed Burlington Northern route. Uh, so in a sense, we're kind of going, in my mind, we're going back in time. Um, and, and I appreciate the clarification that Highway 100 is not an option. Uh, I was a little concerned when I first saw that, and I didn't want to start having the field phone calls from people in Golden Valley, uh, you know, or worried about a new route. But anyway, I just wanted people to know that are we, uh, are we pleased with this? Uh, no. Um, do we understand it? Yes. Um, but on the bright side, and if I may pivot for a moment, Mr. Chair, you know, we just want to make sure we're, we're pleased. We're going to continue to be at the table uh, because we see this as part of a larger regional network. Uh, and uh, in fact, we've already started um, 
pardon the pun, but laying the, 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 the tracks, if you will, the groundwork uh, with the Met Council, with uh, Com County Commissioner Irene Fernando leading the charge with communities going out west along Highway 55 for proposed bus rapid transit. So, of course, we want to be a part of this conversation going forward, even if technically the line is not going to be in Golden Valley, because we want to make sure that uh, the bus rapid transit is seamless and works as part of this network. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, let me just say, uh, uh, we really got to acknowledge that this is a, a big change from the original plan and, and for, for, uh, for Golden Valley, especially. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, maybe even for some parts of Minneapolis too, let's, let's be honest about the development and the work done along the Olson Highway. And so um, we just had to acknowledge that, that and, and I really appreciate your thoughts and, and, and really appreciate uh, Golden Valley and you, uh, Chef, being at the table, continuing to, because uh, this is a, about a regional system. And uh, as the areas of this, this area, the metro is growing, we got to uh, kind of consider how this connectivity is going to work. So um, absolutely, I think that uh, how we think about uh, the uh, connecting tissue to this, uh, this uh, backbone is part of the larger picture that we should be considering. So um, thank you so much for those words. And I, I, uh, I think that goes for a lot of kind of the adjacent communities along the way. Uh, you know, I think we should try to uh, maybe spend a little time hearing from Sophia. Uh, she's going to uh, uh, talk about how members of the public and the business community are currently going to be engaged because this is part of this conversation of how do we, how do we, what are we doing with these lines? Uh, you know, how do we, how do we, interact and that is again the how we do it not just what we're doing is uh, is so uh, so critical so uh, Sophia thank you Terzelli and for those that might not know me as well I'm Sophia Guinness I manage community involvement at Metro Transit and just want to acknowledge uh, right away you know this this is a day that project staff have been focusing on for quite some time but we, to Ricardo's point, we're fully aware that there is a lot of the world going on around us, both in terms of folks trying to get vaccines, uh, trying to get uh, watching trials, uh, doing a whole, whole bunch of other things that are pulling attention that are important in our world. And so with that, you know, we, we really were kicking off these discussions in terms of finding these solutions and specifically on the initial route options themselves, we're taking comments through April 30th, and we're, you know, kind of revealing everything, right, and, and getting out, and we really want you know, reaching everybody and letting them know what these options on the table are and how we came to them. So with that, some just kind of high-level efforts that we have planned. Uh, my colleague, Kyle Manuli has been doing some great work in getting radio and TV ads to reach diverse committees, communities, and you know, we'll have something on KMOJ pretty soon, among other, other efforts. We'll really lean on social media as a way to reach people. We launched today the Blue Line Facebook page. So, uh, you know, for those that just uh, want to you know, scroll on their phones and get some information and uh, figure out how to engage, that's available. We know video is a, a way to explain and connect. And throughout the next months, we'll continue to produce content that pulls people in, explains the project, and further furthers the conversation. We'll reach out specifically to our community and business stakeholders. And we're, we're really excited. Uh, my colleague, Joan Von Halle, will address this at the end, but to kick off the community engagement cohort to really dive deeply into our communities with, with our consultants that Hennepin County was able to hire. Next slide, please. I would be remiss by just not directing people to the Blue Line webpage. I get a lot of questions of where do I find this? Where do I find this? And uh, the blue line page has it all for you. So tools to engage, we have our interactive map. There's uh, committee details if you want the presentation from today, that's where it is, and our contact information. So uh, that that's where you wanna go. Next slide. Part of our philosophy for this stage of the project, so we know, you know every, everybody's busy, so we wanna give multiple ways for folks to, to, to give us feedback in a way that fits what they want to do. So we have an interactive map on the webpage. The view that's up right now kind of shows even some of the former alignment. 
but you can you can turn off that layer and you can zoom into the to the various areas. Uh, before I logged into the meeting today, I saw people already starting to post comments about uh, issues and opportunities that they saw within their communities. We also have a survey that is live. Before I logged in today, I think we already had about 100 responses and we need to get way, way, way more, uh, including you know, really connecting with people out in the world and, and not just through electronic ways. Sometimes you just have a comment and you don't wanna take a survey or dink around with our map or whatever. And so we, we have a way to give a general comment uh, and you're, or they can email me. We have folks that have already sent things like attachments and whatnot with ideas. And so we are taking, we're taking that feedback in whichever way we folks want to give it and really want to stress that we will come to you and that includes the, the members of this committee today you know if there's council work sessions you want us to come and be at or events that you are hosting as well and you'd like project staff to come with you we will come with you we, we want to really start talking about the details and whatnot next slide please We know there's a lot of questions. And so part of that, we already have some virtual town halls scheduled. We'll go through a presentation fairly similar to today and then leave a lot of time for folks to answer, ask questions and provide comments. Not everybody can make those times right. So we will record the events and put them on YouTube as another way to, to hear. Next slide. As I think we already kind of heard from some of the discussion this morning, these options lead to almost more questions than we have answers for. And so this is our this is our way to get into that conversation. And so what we're kind of our frame for some of our engagement right now and what we're asking folks for is validating if what we're presenting seems right. Are we missing anything? is what we put forward resonating as good options to bring forth what opportunities and issues at specific, to specific locations do people see. We know that our community is an expert of their in their neighborhoods and often they see things that are will be critical for us to pull through into our engineering as we move forward. And, 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 bait, and kind of to that question, we know folks, you know, you, you might have a reaction right away. You, you, you might support something right away, but we know in a lot of cases, uh, folks need a lot more information before they can fully make a decision about how we're moving forward. So what are those pieces that will help with that process to finally come to a community supported alignment here from now? We also need kind of on the planning side to do the, to, to have it, to evaluate the project in terms of its benefits and impacts. And so we have evaluation goals that will become a whole matrix of criteria that'll help us really weigh those options to see what comes out. And if you go to the next slide, Sam, Sam will go more into our next steps, but one of the pieces that we are asking for feedback on right away from our communities are our project goals. And these elements will help us evaluate both the, the many options that are in front of us. And since we're bringing the blue line forward and trying to retain as much of the project as possible, these goals initially came from our previous environmental work. So there were things that partners at this table helped us create in the past. And what we did as staff is kind of modernize some of the language. They were initially written about a decade ago. And you know we, we can say things a little bit better now in, in terms of uh, Metro Transit and Hennepin County's priorities. And, specifically to note the two goals at the bottom initially had kind of been combined and we pulled them out specifically to really speak to some of the priorities that we know we have more now as a community whether that's efforts to address climate change or specifically to tackle uh, equity and with the goal of reducing regional racial disparities and the importance of that so kind of kind of just led with that right away and I'm going to leave this here for the committee. It's something that we can come back with and talk about more as we still have a lot of information to share with you today. So, uh, Chair, if there's any questions, otherwise, I will turn it over to Sam. All right. Any questions uh, from anybody? Well, well thanks, this is um, Council Member Chambliss. I just wanted to say, um, 
Thank you to everyone um, who's participating and especially to the new advisory committee members and the Blue Line Coalition. Um, everyone's voice is so important as we um, look at these um, options and we've talked about many of the issues regarding equity and racial reducing racial disparities, including anti-displacement and exploring what's best for economic development opportunities in terms of equity throughout the corridor. One of the things that I recommended was that um, we have a fuller conversation about the definition of anti-displacement and what that means. And um, Joan can talk to how we're going to engage the community around those discussions and how we're going to get their feedback and input um, through community engagement, which is um, one of the next steps. Thank you, uh, Council Member. Um, why don't we listen, hear from Sam uh, about some of the next uh, steps? You know, if our goal is to have a community supported alignment by the end of the year, um, how's that going to work? So, Sam, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, committee members. And uh, my name is Sam O'Connell, and um, I'm the project lead on the Met Council side, but working with a great team and just wanted to spend a couple moments with you today to talk about where we find ourselves and where we're going. So we have been, as Dan talked um, in the beginning of our meeting, where we started and basically August you know, 2020 is when we made this transition to really find a solution for a, a route that um, can serve and connect the people that work and live in the corridor. So um, that started basically in August and with everybody coming together and listening and hearing and understand that this is big and that we have a lot of um, and a variety of opinions and thoughts coming together. But what we did hear very quickly is that in order to move forward, our communities needed to see, you know, what what is possible, what can we do? So that's where we find ourselves right now in that we are here right in the middle there. And that is based on the sort of the initial evaluation, again, using the project principles, using what we've heard so far from community members um, and really looking at some of this at a conceptual level. This brings us to kind of our next steps is where, as Sophia talked about, um, we're going to be out in the community. We're going to hear, did we miss it? Do you, are there other things we should be thinking about moving forward? What does this really look like in terms of impacts? And we're going to continue to do our good work to help us refine those routes that you've seen on the maps. And if we need to add or modify, this is the time for us to have that conversation. And then we're going to bring that back and we're going to have um, more conversations here at the corridor management committee and bring some of that analysis forward. Um, you know, some of the questions that we heard today, what are those impacts to traffic to right of way and really bring that um, forward. So the discussion continues not only here at corridor management committee, but at our community and business advisory committees, as well as working within the um, community members. That really is going to be kind of our our late spring summer work and bring this back to um, community members. We do see the development of a couple of reports that would be out in the public for comment, for review, for the discussion, and really bringing that back to where the hope is we can identify that community supported route that brings us into the next phase of our project and our next work. Um, I do, if we, Jason, if we can move to the next slide. Please, thanks. So today, this this um, this afternoon, we spent a lot of time in that conceptual engineering and design. Um, we have a lot more work in that area to go. So uh, pieces that we will be bringing back to um, our advisory committees for discussion is beginning to identify where we could put stations that serve our communities, that really connect um, our communities um, in a way that provides access to uh, the, the, the things that we need in our life and, and places of work and education. We're going to understand a little bit more of what those right-of-way impacts, like I said, and then understand how is that light rail going to actually work in some of these, um, of these routes that have been identified. Going kind of diagonally down from there is also the community benefits and a lot of, I think, what we've heard from Denise and Ricardo and bringing that 
Center in Forefront. Um, we understand the success of this project really is going to be the ability, it's going to be based on the ability of how we can address those issues and how we can move those forward. Um, we hear anti-displacement as we need those tools in creating wealth within communities. Um, so what we'd like to suggest to uh, the group here as the council, as Hennepin County, as our city partners are beginning to look into the toolbox and identify what we can bring to the table, is provide that opportunity at um, the April uh, CMC meeting to provide a little bit more space for that conversation. We're just, I think, touching the surface of it now and really need um, more voices around the table to understand what that is. And I just don't want to leave. Uh, there are two other pieces that we will need to have, I think, a discussion here um, um, within our spaces. One, as Sophia talked about, project goals, objectives, and criteria. And then also, how do we address some of those previous commitments that were made with the alignment um, prior to this in Golden Valley and some parts of Minneapolis? How do we still keep that uh, going forward and how can we address that? Jason, if we can have the next slide, please. So just very, very much want to underscore is that we hear those communities' concerns and, and Denise and Ricardo, um, that is where we do want to work with you on that as well and bring solutions to the table as well. So it's definitely all agencies on deck, all the hands possible and, and working towards that as well. So as we said, we want to bring some of that discussion to our next meeting. Jason, if we can have the next slide, please. So just at a high level overview, again, um, in terms of what we anticipate for activities for the rest of the year, bringing that conceptual engineering forward through our discussions, um, really begin to dig into some of those project benefits and impacts. We know those are, are important elements to that help understand um, and uh, allow folks to really embrace um, the possibilities here, but we need that data, we need that information to, to move forward. We would love to have that community supported route by the end of the year and then our continued work um, in particular with the Federal Transit Administration of identifying what that environmental path looks like for us and that continued activity uh, to identify um, again this project moving forward and, and moving through the federal process. Um, our hope is that starting um, beyond 2021, so uh, basically 2022 is that we can begin that environmental analysis. At some point, there is a component of municipal consent that we will um, discuss and bring to the community here or uh, in conversation about what that looks like. Um, and then also um, beyond that, develop our construction engineering plans and design details. So a lot of work this year, more to come, but our commitment is keeping folks engaged around the table and all through the process as well. Jason, if I could have the, the next slide, please. So with that, Chair, that's our overview and just want to turn this back to you. I know we have one more update, but um, just wanted to share again that we're keeping our eye on the destination, but clearly knowing that there's so many other community events and factors going on, we also just really want to score that we're only moving at the speed of trust with our community members too. Thank you, Sam. That is uh, really a great overview. The complexity and the number of touch points that we're going to be engaged with uh, really in the in the near term. Um, any questions for Sam? Any, any from committee members? Yes, Chair. Uh, this is Mayor Elliott. Sure. Go ahead, Mayor. All right. Good to see you again. Well, I I am um, just wanting to underscore uh, the concerns raised uh, by uh, Ricardo, by Denise, uh, and the comments uh, made by um, uh, Riva. And you know, I think I think we have to sort of step back uh, and think a little bit about this project uh, from the standpoint of equity and ask, you know, how well are we doing in that regard? Uh, Pete Buttigieg, the, the new Secretary of Transportation in December, issued a statement saying black and brown neighborhoods have been disproportionately divided by highway projects and isolated by the lack of adequate transit and transportation resources. And he's committed to prioritizing, quote, righting these wrongs. James Baldwin says, uh, history is not past, 
It is the present. We carry our history with us. So the question is, you know, what are we doing different? And the fact that we haven't had the conversations around anti-displacement yet, to me, it means that we're, we're, we haven't prioritized it yet. And Chair, I believe in your leadership, I do. Uh, and I, I don't think we need part of a meeting in April to discuss it. I think we probably need a whole meeting to discuss anti-displacement uh, if we're going to prioritize it. And we need to understand uh, from the data, you know, who who lives along, uh, uh, who, who lives in the, in the corridor uh, and uh, who's, who's going to benefit uh, from uh, the different options that have been presented. And we need like real information about that. We also need real information about who would be displaced, uh, you know, from, from these lines. There's information retrospectively that we have about where 94 went, and you can see uh, where uh, people of color are located, for instance, just in Minneapolis. And you can see that it went literally through those neighborhoods uh, having an uh, adverse effect. But this line stands to bring uh, benefits uh, where it goes. And so, you know, we don't want to divide black and brown communities with highways and then uh, not, not allow them to benefit from uh, light rail. So, so we just, we, we need some real data, some real information, and then we need uh, some real set of policies that can really center anti-displacement. So thank you very much. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Mayor. And I really appreciate that uh, coming uh, on what Ricardo, Denise, Riva have described and, and Sam. I mean, I think that uh, this is more than just a, an agenda item. I think this has to be an ongoing kind of conversation. And as you point out, not just a philosophy, but let's get granular with the data. I think that's what is before us. So uh, thank you for, for bringing that perspective. Um, I think we should just touch quickly with Joan Van Halle, who is going to share with us an update on uh, some of those engagement contracts, because that's a, one of the means by which we're going to collect some of that, uh, that good information. So uh, Joan. Thank you, Chair Zelli. Can people hear me? Yes. All right. Um, can we go to the next slide? I'll be really brief because I know that there's um, probably more to be said in this meeting, but I just wanted everybody to know that here at Hennepin County, we're close partners with Metro Transit in implementing this line, and we're in the process of implementing, finalizing 17 contracts with community-based organizations that are trusted community partners with expertise on their own constituents, their cultures, their geographies. So within that, we have a great mix in this team. Um, we have three organizations whose primary focus is area one. We have three organizations who, prioritize, who are prioritizing area two. And all 17 community and cultural organizations will focus in area three. So we're gonna work together as a cohort. It'll be collaborative and coordinated across the corridor. I'm in uh, included in those 17 are seven contracts where we're primarily gonna be focusing on amplifying communications and learning from our communities. What are the best ways to communicate with you? So um, as has been stated before, these uh, community-based experts will be on board with us till the end of the year, really helping to get out and hear from everybody in response to the, um, and help with receiving feedback as Sophia and Sam outlined. And so that's me for now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Joan. And I know we're at time. Uh, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, next meeting is going to be April 8th at 1.30. Um, I know we have so much more to discuss. One of the issues, I'll just say it, is uh, the voting status of these various uh, represented communities. So, uh, Kathy, that's not lost on me. Uh, we have a lot <laughs> more ahead of us. And uh, just know you don't have to wait a month. Uh, you can uh, email, email, email me 
or any staff members. I really want to thank uh, Sam and Dan and everybody, Sophia, John, Mr. Chair. Nick, um, uh, Irene. Yes, hey, Irene, sorry. Uh, I, I know that we, we are at time. I just want to express uh, gratitude to all of the staff and everybody who's attended here. Um, Commissioner Lundy and I are uh, working very closely together to ensure that uh, that the community is engaged in ways that are meaningful to them, that um, to, that each each community along the alignment, right? This isn't this kind of one size fits all thing. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we're accessible to all of the municipal leaders. You have uh, invested a lot of time, a lot of ordinances, a lot of uh, financial expenditure in, in the vision of connecting uh, our residents to the healthcare jobs, educational opportunities uh, that they deserve and have earned. And so I just want to uh, express that we, uh, Commissioner Lundy and I on, on the head up inside, want to make sure that we're accessible. And of course, uh, every single month at these meetings uh, that we are working uh, strongly with our Met Council partners uh, to, to bring this line into fruition. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Irene. And uh, I will uh, suggest that is actually a wonderful closing. Uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, in a few weeks, we'll gather again with even more uh, information. So stay tuned. Great to see you all. Thank you so much for everybody's uh, 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 really leaning into this, this engagement work. See you soon. We're adjourned. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.